Hello, I am Raymond Mayfield. Thank you for tuning in to this broadcast today. All of my videos are on www.raymondmayfield.com or raymondmayfield.com, and I appreciate you listening. I have two counseling sites. One is counselorsofpeace.com and counselorsoftruth.com, and I'd be glad to talk to you on the telephone. If I can help you, please let me know. I have, of course, my mail that I get through over the Internet here, and if you'd like to talk to me through the mail here, just uh, text me on the mail there, and I'll be glad to uh, get back with you. God bless you. I want to talk to you about Romans 1.17 today. Spoke to you in my last session on the first 16 verses in the book of Romans chapter 1. The 16th verse has been discussed and talked about for many years. There was a minister many years ago by the name of Martin Luther. He was a professor at the University of Wittenberg in Germany, and as he was teaching his students on the book of Romans, as he was teaching, this verse jumped out at him, Romans 1 and 17, the just shall live by faith. The Holy Spirit used this scripture to bring Martin Luther to Jesus Christ, and the Reformation started. He realized that the just shall live by faith. This verse simply means this. This good news tells us that God makes us ready for heaven and makes us right in God's sight when we put our faith and trust in Christ to save us. If you're looking to be saved today, and I hope that you are, uh, look to Jesus today and he can save you uh, and look to faith and trust and believing in Jesus Christ. All we have to do is put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in uh, that he died and rose again on the third day and repent of our sins uh, and a change comes in our life. The Holy Spirit comes in our life and all things become new. It's a glorious thing to be a Christian. Then he tells us in verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth of unrighteousness. It tells us that there is a precedent that's being set in our life if we're going to make heaven. Then in verse 20, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that even was eternal power and Godhead. This, it says, is that we are without excuse. The next, that very verse says that we are without excuse. When we understand the creation of God and we understand the, the things He has made and we can understand the things that we are saying, if we reject God, we're without excuse. You know, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. How can you look at around at all the things that we see out here in creation today, the trees, the stars, the flowers, the universe, and all the things, uh, and not realize and understand there is a God of all omnipotent power that exists today and created all of us. God has created you. Worship Him and praise Him for what He has done for you. Uh, that then we goes on to say uh, we are when we see the creation of God we need to glorify Him. But verse 21 says because that when they knew not God they glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful. You know that sticks out to me when I read that. Neither were they thankful. And this evidently is talking about the children of Israel when they knew God they didn't glorify Him. They turned their back up on God and neither were they thankful. You know, we're living in America today where we got a lot of blessings, we got a lot of food to eat. Uh, help us to be thankful. You can know we can be gluttonous, you know, in the United States there's more people that are obese than any place I think in the world and we can become so uh, uh, richly involved in the things that we eat that we don't become thankful. We need to be thankful every day for what God has given us. But they became a vain in their imaginations. They begin to think up imaginations of all kinds, uh, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Uh, professing themselves to become wise, it goes on to say in verse 23, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible of God into an image like unto corruptible men of birds and four-footed and creeping things. In verse 23, it says that the, what that really means is they changed, uh, changed the 
glory of God and thought they would become wise and they began to worship idols and they made uh, things with man uh, made like birds and four-footed creeping things and they begin to worship them God help us when we can't worship God turn your back on idolatry for those of you who listen to me they're in idolatry come out from Babylon and and rejoice in the things of God if you're not saved today repent of your sins the Lord Jesus Christ wants you to be saved he wants to come into your heart and I want to tell you with all this strong preaching today I want to tell you that I love you very much and this is Raymond Mayfield and I'll talk to you on the last session of Romans chapter 1 in my next session thank you so much for listening Glory to God. May it reach out and touch someone. You never know.